This is the tutorial on points, lines, and planes. Let's talk about those first two items for a moment. A point is simply a dot that indicates a location in space and does not occupy any area, while a line connects at least two points, extends in both directions to infinity, and does not occupy any area. So let me illustrate that on a graph. Let's go ahead and plot two points. I'm going to plot my first point, point A, at negative 3, comma, negative 4. So I'll go ahead and go 3 units to the left of the origin and 4 units down, and plot a point there, and I'll label it point A. This may be reminiscent for some of you from Algebra 1, and that's okay. We're just going to cover it briefly and then move on because it's very important in geometry. I'll plot a second point, point B, at coordinate 4, comma 5. So I'll go 4 from the origin to the right and 5 up, and I'll plot a point there. This point I'll label point B. Now I'm going to connect points A and B with a line. You can see the green line that I've drawn. That's going to be called line AB because it's a line containing points A and B. So I'll write it over here to the right. Oftentimes you'll see it illustrated with the line above it. That's technically correct, so we're going to put it here. Now, what do you think happens when two lines intersect? Well, when two lines intersect, they intersect at exactly one point. So let's draw two lines in, and we'll see where they intersect. Here I've drawn in lines AB and CD, so I'll write them over here. Line AB and line CD. You can see over here on the left on the graph that they intersect at one point and one point only this point right in the center of this circle. And that point, if you check it out on the graph, has a coordinate value of 0, 3. So that would be the intersection point of these two lines. Now the next thing we want to talk about is a plane. A plane is a two-dimensional surface that extends in every direction to infinity and does not occupy any area. So let's take a look at that on a graph again. Here's our graph, and I'll draw in a plane for us to take a look at. If I were to connect any four points on this graph, so I'll put a point here, and we'll put a point there, and a point here, and another point here. Now I'll connect all of those points to create a plane. So here's the plane we've created, all connected together now. Now this is all two-dimensional. It goes up and down on the screen, and it goes left and right, which means that this plane exists in that dimension. So it's going to go up in this direction for infinity. It's going to go over here in infinity. It's going to go this direction in infinity. It's going to go all these directions in infinity. But it only exists in that one two-dimensional space. It doesn't exist coming out of the monitor into you, and it doesn't exist going back into the monitor away from you. It only exists in that two-dimensional area. Now what do you think happens when two planes intersect? Well, when two planes intersect, what we get is the formation of a line, because the intersection of two planes occurs on one line only. So I'm going to remove the graph and we'll draw two planes so you get an idea of what we're referring to. Here you see two planes that I've drawn. The first plane is this box that I've created in red. And the second plane is a triangle that I've created in blue. Now imagine that the red box exists in the plane of your monitor. So left and right and up and down in your monitor. And imagine that the triangle is actually deeper past your monitor. It begins there at this top point right here. And it comes out of the monitor at you. 
it passes through that square red plane of your monitor and is now coming out in front of your face. If that were to happen, the point where those two planes, the red plane and the blue plane meet, is this actual green line right here as the blue triangular plane passes through your monitor screen. I've illustrated that line in green and now I'll connect all those dots so that you can see that it's one line directly across that goes to infinity to the left and right of your monitor screen because remember that red box plane goes to infinity in all directions and that blue triangular plane also goes to infinity in all directions. Alright, so now you can see that that green line is actually a line going to infinity left and right of your monitor screen. Now there's another thing we'd like to discuss that comes around with points, lines, and planes. And that's the endpoint. An endpoint is a point that marks the beginning of a ray or the end of a segment. Well, what's a ray and what's a segment? A ray begins at a point and goes on to infinity in one direction. And a segment begins at a particular point and ends at another point. The line segment that is created between those two endpoints carries an infinite number of points. So let's go ahead and bring in a graph and illustrate these points as well. So here's that graph. All right. Well, an endpoint is a point that marks the beginning of a ray, and a ray begins at a point. So let's just pick a random point on here. I'm going to pick this point right here, negative 4, comma 3. So a ray begins at a point, so it will begin at this point, and it's going to go to infinity in one direction. So I'll just pick a random direction and draw that ray starting at that point and going to infinity in that direction. So there it is. It's gone from that point off the graph and it's just going to go forever, further up and to the right on this graph. So you can have a ray that goes in any direction from any one point. It's just going to have a finite point where it begins, but it will end nowhere at infinity. It's just going to keep going. Let's also look at a segment. A segment begins at a particular point and ends at another point. So I'll use the same point that we began at for our ray, and I'll choose another endpoint. I'm going to go over here to the lower right at point 5, comma, negative 3 and I'll draw a point there. So our segment is going to join those two endpoints. I've gone ahead and drawn our segment in blue. Now one thing we should talk about is naming rays and segments. So I'm going to go ahead and name our ray first. Let's name the initial point that both of these ray and segment began at. We'll call it point A. Now to name a ray, you need to pick another point that occurs somewhere on the ray and use that in the naming. So I'm going to pick this nice even point right up top here, which occurs at 3, 6. And I'm going to call that point B. So to name this ray, this would be ray AB. And you would draw a little ray over it, an arrow pointing to the right. Now let's go ahead and name this segment. The segment obviously ends at point A, and the other endpoint is going to occur at 5, negative 3, like we said. So we can call that C. So segment AC is going to look like this, just a line over the top, without an arrow going any direction on either end, because it has a beginning and an endpoint that are finite. So remember that when drawing segments, you always have to draw a nice line over the top. And when drawing rays, you always draw an arrow over the top. 